After one of my last videos, I received an overwhelming number of comments asking me how to best use a flight simulator for real-world flight training, something I've set up for many people. So today I'm going to show you what I think are some of the most important add-ons to have to give you the best flight training experience. One of the first things you'll probably look for is an aircraft that resembles one you might be flying in real life. So here you may notice that this aircraft bears a striking resemblance to the ones in my videos. This is in fact the Piper Archer from Carnado, and it is very closely related to the Piper Warrior in flight characteristics. Next, you're going to want to have a good set of flight controls. Here I've chosen something that you can probably pick up at a local Best Buy or on Amazon which is the Satec X52. It's a very popular model. It has a joystick, but most importantly, a joystick with rudder control. I can control it by rotating around the axis here instead of using rudder pedals, which are more expensive, which is why I don't have them, but definitely recommended. The throttles are down here at my left, so they're not in view or cluttering up my desk space. I definitely recommend having a good set of speakers or headphones to use with your system too. The headphones, extra bonus if they have a microphone so you can actually talk to air traffic control if you fly online with VATSIM or using another tool that I'll show you in a few minutes. The last piece of hardware that I recommend is probably one of the most realistic. It's called Track IR. The first part here is a hat that you wear with three IR reflectors on them. And the second part is up here. Most people think this is a webcam, but it's not. Let me show you what it does. So Track IR is a head tracker. It translates the movement of my head into the game, so you don't have to press any buttons to look around. I see a lot of people fly flight simulators in a really rigid view, and if they even look around, it's by 90 degree increments. Track IR lets you use visual flying like you would in the real world. You're constantly lining up your wing with the runway or looking at 45 degree angles and craning your neck around everywhere to fly for real. Why not do it in a flight simulator? Having two screens adds a lot to the flight simulation experience. You have one for your main view and then another for whatever else you need while you're flying. So this could be, here you see charts, could be airport information so you can get your frequencies or know the runway lengths. Alternatively, if you fly in the real world and you use an iPad in the cockpit, take it along with you. Here's ForeFlight. Put it down in front of you just like you would have it on your lap when you were flying. That's all the hardware I have for you today. I have my checklist right here. Let's do a quick start up and taxi up to the runway. All right, let's get started. Seatbelts are fastened, parking brake is on, electrical switches are all off, radios are off, fuel selector is on the proper tank, mixture full rich, carburetor heat is off, circuit breakers are all in, rotating beacon is on, master switches on, electric fuel pump is on, we're going to prime as required. Throttle, open one quarter, prop area, I don't see anybody around, clear prop, and engine start. Idle in a thousand RPM. Temperatures and pressures are all in the green. Alternator on, fuel pump off, radio is on. Three, four, seven, zero, wind, two, four, four, five, five. Great, we're started up and ready to go. Now I said I had one more trick up my sleeve to help you learn how to do air traffic control in Flight Simulator. We all know that you can just click the buttons to the side, but it doesn't have the same kind of feel as actually talking to air traffic control. You can either do VATSIM, 
which is an online network of air traffic controllers and pilots that communicate over a client like TeamSpeak. Or we have multi-crew experience. Check this out. First, let's tune in Martha's Vineyard Ground on 121.8. Using the real radios in the airplane gives you a better feel as well. Vineyard Tower Warrior 8027 Foxtrot is ready to taxi for takeoff, remaining in the pattern with information Charlie. Taxi to and hold short of runway 24 via Alpha for 27 Foxtrot. So while we're taxiing, let's talk about a few software add-ons that I recommend too. For one, there's AccuFeel, which is generating some of the great sounds that you can hear right now. AccuFeel gives you a lot more of the feel of a real aircraft that's part of the AccuSim revolution, as they call it. And uh, here are some of the options you can take a look at. The EasyDot camera lets you move the camera around the cockpit like this if you don't have track IR. Gives you some great views, lets you move around laterally too, so you can change seats or what have you. If you're flying an FSX, the Reality XP GPS gives you the exact same software that's running on a real Garmin GPS like I have in my plane, so you can use it in the simulator for practice. There's also a trainer available online through the real Garmin website that lets you play with it on your computer as well. Great, so we're pulling up to the runway here. I'll put my hat back on and my headset and we'll fly a pattern together. All right, fuel pump on, landing light on, transponder on, mixture's full rich, carburetor heats off, mags are on both, and it looks like we're ready for takeoff, so we'll ask the tower for clearance. Vineyard Tower, Warrior 8027 Foxtrot, is ready for takeoff, departing to the north. Good to take off runway 24 straight out, 27 Fox Drive. Clear touch and go 24, 27 Fox Drive. And bring the throttle back. Inside the white arc, add one notch of flaps. Pitch down. And we're pretty close to the runway because of the wind, so. Just bring it around nice tight on the base turn. There's 80 knots. We're looking for 70 knots approach speed. And should be able to find the runway. There it is. A little bit low, add some power. 500 feet. 75 knots. Just add some more power to keep us to the runway. Looks like a much better sight picture. Good. Start bringing the power back. Add another notch of flaps, keep us on the center line. Power all the way out. One more notch of flaps, we have the runway made. A little bit more power, center line. Looking good. There's the flare. Not bad. So I hope you enjoyed my two cents on learning how to fly with a flight simulator. I think it can actually add a lot to your training, especially in IFR training. It could save you a lot of money at the same time. 
If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments, and otherwise, get out there, use your flight simulator like a pro, and then go for your flight training and get your pilot's license. Thanks for listening.